Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 70 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to talk about the white and the black slider and how you could adjust them to get the most accurate white point and or black point possible. Now, in previous episodes, I've discussed how to adjust these sliders. There's a couple different ways you could do it. Uh, what a lot of people do is they'll hold the Alt or Option key in, Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have the Mac, and then you would click down on, let's say, the white slider, and when you do that, it turns black, and you would adjust it till something bleeds through, and then you would back it off, and that would give you a white point. And similarly, you would do something like that with the black slider. Another way I taught how to do it, and what we're going to talk about a little bit in this episode is you could do it very, very quickly by just holding the shift key down on your keyboard and then double clicking on the name. In this case, whites, or just double click on that. And then that will adjust the whites automatically to give you a white point where none of your highlights are clipping at all. They're just on the edge, but they're not clipping. And then you could do that again by holding the shift key down and double clicking on the word blacks and then that will give you a black point where all the black pixels or darker pixels in your image aren't clipping. They're just on the verge, but they're not clipping. So that's kind of like a perfect white and black point. And then a lot of us will adjust them a little bit from there, just more to our taste. Because sometimes we like a little, a few of the pixels at least maybe to clip, whether it be whites or blacks. And that isn't a discussion for today. What I do want to tell you is, Sometimes this holding the shift key in and double clicking on the names of the sliders doesn't work real well. And where, you're, where you will find that problem is if you're doing an image such as this one, where a lot of the image is black, it's not always going to give you the best white or black point for the subject, in this case, the strawberries. So if I hold the shift key in and I double click on the word whites, it'll give me minus 61. If I double click on the word blacks, it gives me plus 23. Now it is giving me those settings based on every single pixel that is in this image, including all these black pixels. So it's kind of skewed towards the black side because of all that you know black background. Well. The way to get maybe a more accurate white and black point for your subject, in this case the strawberries, is open up the crop tool and just draw a crop right on your subject of the strawberries. Close the crop tool. Now go back to your whites and your blacks and do the same thing. Hold the shift key in. Now we're at minus 61 when we we're looking at the entire image. We're going to hold that shift key in, double click on the word whites, and you can see it's minus 54. We'll do the same thing with blacks, double click on it, and it's minus two. So now this is a more accurate white and black point for our subject. We're just ignoring the background in this instance. So we'll go back to our crop tool. We'll go down here to this drop down, which is right next to the padlock right now. It says as shot. We'll just go to original. It undoes our or undoes. It undoes our crop. We'll close the crop tool, and we have our entire image back. Now you can see we it really didn't affect the background at all. We have a nice adjustment for the strawberries, the white and black point. Now similarly, where this really comes in handy is if you're doing portraiture, especially in the studio. In this case, I have a model. She's in front of the white background. It's a solid white background. If we just adjust the white and black point by holding the shift key and double clicking on the word whites, I get plus 26. Keep that shift key uh, pressed in and double click on blacks and we get minus 34. Now, if I open the crop tool and I just do a crop of what I feel is important in the image, which is her face, and then close the crop tool. Now we have that crop of her face and we'll do this same thing. We'll hold the shift key in. We're at, my, at plus 26 when Lightroom looked at the entire image, looked at every single pixel. Now it's just going to look at the pixels on her face. We'll hold that shift key in and it's plus 33. And similarly for the blacks, it's minus seven. So there was a big change on blacks. Now we'll go back to the crop tool and we'll go to original 
that undoes our crop. And there is a perfect white and black point for our model. Who cares about the background? Who cares about her white uh, top? It's just the background. And, you know, we could do it even uh, if we're not in the studio, existing light photograph. We have some adjustments here. Um, we didn't do the white and black point yet. If we just do the white, black, white and black point now, we'll get plus 26 and minus 6 for the blacks. Well, let's just look at her face and her hair a little bit like that. Close the crop tool. Now we're at plus 26 on whites when it looked at the entire image. Now I'll hold the shift key in again and double click. It's plus 46 and the blacks is minus two. We'll undo our crop, go up here to the crop tool and go back to the original. And there is a perfect white and black point for her face, neck and hair. So that's a way you could probably just get a more accurate white and black point on an image that has either something that's predominantly very bright. You could have a landscape with a very bright sky and you really want to get a good white and black point, not for the sky. Let's say that's not important. You have a picture of someone in the foreground and you want to get a good white and black point for their face. So you would just do that quick crop on her face or his face, um, then do the white and black point. Now, you don't have to do the white and black point ahead of time like I did. Like I did the whole image first and I did the white and black point and like that you don't have to do that you could skip that step you could have these on zero and go right to your crop tool and do your crop right away you save time it helps if you have that lock unlocked and then you could get a more accurate thing like that close the crop tool and then you could do it again and like that and then you could go back and undo your crop so that's, I hope, you know, that taught you something you didn't know, how you could get a more accurate white and black point for an image that has something either like a, a lot of pixels that are really bright or a lot of pixels that are really black, and it might be throwing off the white and black point for your subject. That's it. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'd like to thank everyone that supports me with donations or buying my presets and my Photoshop actions. It's because of you I'm able to do these free videos. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.